Welcome to an introduction to green, degrowth and anti-capitalist economic theories. Green economics. Green economics has a theoretical process. 1. Examine global political economy. 2. Develop forms of regulation beyond the market and the state. And 3. Examine the transition to an alternative economy. Essentially what this means is to look at the global political economy, find out why it works the way that it does. Is profit really vital to production? Developing forms of regulation beyond the market and the state may refer to local scale initiatives such as car sharing. Changing the attitude of the average Joe may be just as important to answering the sustainability question as targeting governments and the market itself. And then finally, the examination of a transition to an alternative economy involves deciding upon a path in which meeting needs becomes the forefront of our economic policy, rather than generating profit. Features Green economics works under the principle that environmental problems can only be resolved with political change. That as businesses work independently of one another, government regulation is required to ensure that production is done in a clean and sustainable manner. Green economics also considers meeting needs versus generating profit. That while profit generation is a useful tool in motivating producers, meeting the needs of consumers is far more important. By extension, green economics also looks into steady state economics. The idea that where a country has developed, they may no longer need to grow, and that the economy can be kept steady for as long as it is sustainably producing enough for the populace. Sustainable production can be achieved in large economies by closing loops, as discussed in the Ecological Economics video. And finally, scale. Green economics considers the importance of local and global scales, but only with an attitude change at the absolute bottom level as well as at the top can true change be achieved. Green economics would bring in cooperatives, the ideas of social or group ownership to the products, reducing the need for individual ownership. As such, services such as carpools may be popular under this model. Degrowth economics. There is no real definition of degrowth, but there are five main interpretations. The first two, GDP degrowth and consumption degrowth, work under the principle that the capitalist system could comfortably slow, stop and then degrow. Not a recession, but that we can comfortably reduce our production and consumption without reducing our quality of life. Radical degrowth economists believe that there is a greater sense of urgency, that the economy should slow, stop and degrow much faster than regular degrowth economists. This is because they believe that we have already overstepped the limits of our planet's production and that survival depends upon our ability to downsize now. While physical degrowth works under the principle that humanity should downsize its physical footprint upon the earth, that the emergence of cities is extremely damaging to the earth, and that we should rethink the idea of settlements. Living and working in smaller settlements, reducing the need for transport and locally producing food to reduce pollution further. While work time degrowth works under the principle that the well-being of humanity would greatly improve with less emphasis on business. Limiting the importance of profit would also limit the emphasis that people put on working, giving them more free time, more time to rest, and more time to enjoy life. And so, in the end, degrowth economists hope to achieve an equitable downscaling of production, not poverty, but slowly reducing our consumption to the betterment of mankind. Lower production and consumption would boost ecological conditions, as fewer resources are being harvested to produce products and less land is being used for factories and other production plants. And finally, improved well-being through shorter work hours. With less emphasis on profit, humanity would have more time to enjoy itself. Anti-capitalist economics. The cornerstones of this theory are that environmental problems are caused by the current economic system, particularly private resource ownership. But as a result of everybody having to own their own thing, far more is produced than is actually required. For example, do you use your car 24 hours a day? Capitalism also leads to unequal ownership and supply of goods, and anti-capitalist economists point to the differences in development between nations 
as an example of this. Social ownership also appears as a cornerstone of anti-capitalist economics, partly as almost the opposite of private ownership, but also as a way of avoiding public ownership to maintain a value of producing goods for producers, as it is still possible for a producer to make a profit by selling one of something to two or three people, however, to a lesser extent. The use of social ownership is considered important in enabling socially beneficial decisions, as cooperatives can vote with their feet much more heavily, as entire groups at a time choose whether or not to purchase a product based upon its value or its means of production. Finally, there are a series of challenges to all three economic systems. They are so different to mainstream economic theory the political consensus would need to be reached for global support. This is extremely difficult to achieve for anything. These economic systems are also largely theory, without historical evidence of their success. Some of these theories are also incomplete or undefined. Degrowth in particular has five different definitions, as previously discussed. The final challenge is that it is hard to continue motivating a working world without the notion of profit. Reducing our consumption is one thing, but if we find ourselves unable to provide for ourselves at all, would that be more or less damaging to our society? So, what do you think? Please let us know by answering our questionnaire or subscribing to our Twitter feed. Thank you for listening.